As we come in God's love today, let us come join together in the call to worship. Come to hallow the name of God with awe and praise. Come celebrate God's sovereign man on this hope. Come to taste bread for this day's journey that does not fail. Come seeking the gift and the call of forgiveness. Come, let us worship the God who has come to us in Jesus. And let us pray as we have been taught, that we may serve as we have been in God. Let us pray together. We look to you, teaching God, for help when our words stumble, or when our words come freely, but our thoughts are elsewhere. We rely on you, Spirit, to guide and direct us in our worship today. Be with us. Hear us. Save us, we pray. Amen. Our hymn is number 469, Morning Has Broken. we join in worship, let us be mindful of those things that keep us from fully experiencing God's closeness to us. Let us enter into a time of confession. And let us pray silently, and then we will pray in unison. Now in unison, we have often prayed for the things that matter, O oh God, sometimes for ourselves, but not always just for ourselves. We have prayed for peace among people. We have prayed for an end to hunger on this earth. We have prayed for the earth itself. We have prayed for justice and for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray and we watch and we wait, and have not seen all of our prayers come to pass. We do not know why, but we do know that you are mystery and majesty to us, and we continue to pray, believing that you hear us in love by your Spirit's grace, Help us to never hold prayer as anything less than the wondrously marvelous gift that it is. 
Let us be persistent in prayer and discipleship, knowing our God knows the desires of our hearts and also knows what is good for us. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. Amen. affirm our faith, stating what we believe, all in one creed, the Apostles' Creed that we know so well. Church, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Please turn your bulletin to the back and follow on with the announcements. First of all, welcome to Reverend Jim Robinson and his wife Karen. I'm happy to have you in Gilbert again. And there's a brief bio for Jen uh, on one of the inserts in the bulletin. The food of the month is still peanut butter, so if you have not had an opportunity to uh, bring some peanut butter in, please do so. If you have and uh, want to bring more, you can do that as well. Um, another collection that's going on out in the Narfex is the school supply drive um, collection bin that is sponsored by the West Virginia Department of Education. Um, I have some extra copies of the suggested supplies to get by grade uh, programmatic level. If anybody wants one, I can give you one at the end of the service. I, I uh, was in contact with Marcella Charles, our Mingo County uh, contact person, and we are taking our supplies to Mingo Central this Friday. So if you've not had a chance to bring anything in, you can still do so throughout the week. I'm sure most everybody has access to the church. The upcoming uh, events and pulpit supply are listed, and I will highlight August 7th, our annual church picnic and outdoor worship with Reverend Ed Thompson. Are there any other announcements? Oh. PW lesson books are in and are in the North X on the old pulpit. And we have a card going around for Reverend Tom Schuler, who is in uh, one of the hospitals in Williamson. He's home now, but has been hospital. Oh, has? Okay. So if you've not had a chance to sign the card for Reverend Tom Schuler, do that before you leave today. Are there any other announcements? Do we have any birthdays to celebrate? Miss Betty Jo. Miss Betty Jo. Today. All right. Well, is that all? And another year wiser. Well, let's sing to Betty, Joe, and Jim. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Betty, Joe, and Jim. Quite welcome. 
At this point in the service, we share our joys and concerns with each other, and we'll start off with the joys. Well, that's a great gift. Thank you. It's a joy to have so many young adults. And our friend Sue. Nice to see you, Sue. Do we have any concerns to share? Of course, all of those that were affected by the floods uh, in June. Uh, and if you were on the Presbytery list, sir, you got the update from Barbara Chalfant this morning. Uh, and she mentioned last week from the pulpit it's going to be a long process. So um, the first wave of uh, immediate help is now uh, transitioning to long-term recovery. So there's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of prayers needed. Let's remember these uh, joys and concerns throughout the rest of the service and in the week ahead. And at this time, let us stand as we sing hymn number 382. Somebody's knocking at your door.
Please be seated. Just to follow on uh, Jessica's uh, announcement, there's a little change in our ending of our worship today. That there's music in your bulletin. That will be the closing benediction response. That was a last-minute change that we made uh, without telling Jessica that we had done it. So don't blame her for not telling you. I take responsibility for that. It's good to be here, as always. Thank you for... Uh, well, welcoming us and uh, look forward always to being here. Our first reading from Scripture is from Colossians, reading from chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. In the subheading of my uh, text says it's air threatening the church. So let's see what Paul has to say about that. So live in Christ Jesus the Lord in the same way as you received him. Be rooted and built up in him. Be established in faith and overflow with thanksgiving just as you were taught. See to it that nobody enslaves you with philosophy and foolish deception which conform to human traditions and the way the world thinks and acts rather than Christ. All the fullness of deity lives in Christ's body. And you have been filled by him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. You were also circumcised by him. This wasn't performed by human hands. The whole body was removed through this circumcision by Christ, you were buried with him through baptism and raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead because of the things you had done wrong and because your body wasn't circumcised, God made you alive with Christ and forgave all the things you had done wrong. He destroyed the record of the debt we owed with its requirements that worked against us. He canceled it by nailing it to the cross. When he disarmed the rulers and authorities, he exposed them to public disgrace by leading them in a triumphal parade. And so ended this reading from God's Word. Our second reading is uh, chapter 11 of Luke, not chapter 1. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, and you'll recognize uh, that this is the teaching of Jesus on how we are to pray. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. He also said to them, Imagine that one of you has a friend, and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, Friend, loan me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is open. Which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish. 
If a child asked for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Let us pray. Lord, you give us words from Scripture, words to hear, words to take in and Please give us food for contemplation and reflection, and Lord, we ask you to help us to reflect on what we have heard. Help us to hear clearly your message for us this day. Help us to be changed by what we hear. Give us your words to take into our lives as we go forth from here, to live as you would have us to live, being your witness into the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. So much of what we're uh, going to hear today, we've already talked about a lot of it in Sunday school this morning. I, more of you should come to Sunday school, I'll tell you. It's a good class, and uh, thanks for uh, Curtis and others who lead so well and uh, give us so much to think about as we prepare for to be Christ's disciples in the world. We also talked about food, and we talked about mathematics. We talked about being able to make change and different things uh, in preparation for our class. I was reminded, somebody mentioned that uh, Reverend Schuler always has a joke or a story to tell before his sermon. And I heard this recently where uh, a couple of it could be the male or female, doesn't matter. A couple of people always go to lunch, it seems, and one of them always ordered a, a pizza. When they ordered pizza, always designated specifically to cut it in eight pieces. And her, the friend said, well, why is it that you always order eight pieces on your pizza? And she said, I can't eat 12. <laughs> Some people uh, say that the way that we pray says as much about who we are and who God is, at least for us. You know, how we pray says who we understand God to be for us. Um, there are those who say that written prayers are, are not effective, that prayers must be prayed from the heart, must be sharing all that is felt in our hearts with God. Prayer should be spontaneous, like talking with a friend, the thought goes, which, which get, gets deeper into the heart of God if we're praying spontaneously. Prayer should be impulsive, this thinking goes, an opportunity to share with God our needs, to offer our praise. Such thoughts leads to that question that I have actually been asked. Is it true that Presbyterians always use written prayers? Now, behind that question lies the assumption, I would guess, that prayer, using written prayers, is a bad thing. Now, along with that assumption is the feeling that the prayer we call the Lord's Prayer has become rote and ritualistic to, to far too many church people. The words uh, maybe have lost their meaning because we just recite them from memory. That would be the argument, and I suppose there's a bit of truth contained in that. Perhaps we, we do hardly pay attention to what we're saying, uh, but let us not dismiss the importance of the words of the Lord's Prayer too easily. In reading this passage from Scripture, I, I can't help... By the way, I'm reading from the Common English Bible. So you notice there are some different words used uh, in Jesus' instruction about prayer than what we use when we pray. Uh, the, the prayer that we have taken into our memory that we recite uh, later on in our service. But, but sometimes it, it kind of makes you a little uncomfortable to read 
uh, how this instruction played out in this particular passage. Uh, maybe it's because it has so much in it, too much of the familiar, those familiar words of the basic prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer, that we, that we repeat each Sunday. And we see much in this part of Scripture that just does not seem to always be true of our daily experience. We talked about this also. Ask and it shall be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Really? Is that your experience? Does that happen for you every time? Most of us can think of times when, when that just does not seem to be true. It doesn't always work out that way in real life, as the words would so easily suggest. How many of us have prayed for healing for a friend and then that friend dies? Or maybe you've prayed for success in a, in a job and the next week you get laid off. We, gosh, we've all prayed for peace in the world and in our cities, and in our country. And the next morning you read in the newspaper or see on the news about more shooting, more deaths, more terrorist activities. In the midst of our questions, we wonder why our prayers are not answered. Are we not praying right? Are we not using the right words? Are, are we not praying hard enough? Well, Jesus had a word about prayer, and he gave his followers a simple prayer, one that teaches on or touches on every aspect of our relationship with our Father in heaven. And first of all, he said, come to God like a child to a parent. Father, Abba, Daddy, familiar tone of address. Holy is your name. That's our praise to God. And we recognize God, the creator of all that is, as the God who loves us more than our own earthly parents, if we can get our minds around that. God wants to give us what we need, and in humility we ask for enough, enough to sustain us. We ask for God's grace to enable us to live in harmony with our neighbors, to provide for their needs as well as for our own. Now that is one powerful word to us from Jesus, isn't it? These words give us that way of talking with God that we need when we think we have something to say. They make so much sense and they're filled with so much hope and so much grace. Easy to repeat. The center of prayer to the Lord. Perhaps for Jesus it's better to offer this humble prayer than to ramble on and on with words that seem to have more show than content. But then Jesus gets a little weird with his instructions. He, who else but Jesus would encourage us to, to be annoying with God? He calls it persistence. Banging on the door in the middle of the night sounds more like that car alarm that goes off down the street and nobody gets up and turns it off. Or the three-year-old on a hot summer day that quite irritable with the heat and uncomfortable humidity. But Jesus says, persist in your prayers until prayer becomes an ongoing conversation between you and God. Persistent prayer closes that space that we often see between us and a distant God, bringing us closer, ever closer to God. This is a little weird. God deserves our worship. This God is holy. This God is the creator and redeemer of the world. We call this God our Father, and we can be annoying when we ask for the things that we need. You know, building relationships take time, takes time. 
It takes time to build lasting friendships. And maybe that's why we have so few close friends. We don't spend enough time building relationships. You don't make a good friend overnight, in spite of what you see on some of the TV shows. Friendship requires time and persistence and being with another person. And that's true also with our relationship with God. We, keep, we must keep focusing, listening, turning our soul to God's gracious presence. And we try that. Every Sunday, we have many of the same rituals in our worship, a, a repetition of our worship life before God. You know, we like our traditions. And our rituals serve that purpose of, of giving us a framework so that we can be persistent in developing our relationship with God. Jesus told his followers, keep at it. Prayer has its rituals and its opportunities for asking for new things. We always ask, we've already asked in our prayers this morning, we've asked God to be with us, to guide us, to teach us, to be with us, show us how to live and to walk that path of righteousness. God is the one we can trust, the one who loves us, the one who's present day by day, providing what we need. So what if by praying that God would provide our daily bread, we, we recognize that we are thinking and praying unselfishly. We're asking that all would have enough to share. Perhaps if we pray like we really believe that, if all churches would use this prayer every Sunday, then maybe we would be transformed by God so that real changes would happen in the world and hunger would in fact be lessened as a problem for the world. We have a lot of challenges in this 21st century to, to live as Christ's disciples. Most of us have more than our daily share, uh, daily share of bread. Neighbors are not willing to unlock their doors at night. Children are often abused and neglected by their own parents. And yet, the church is called to risk its life on the behalf of, in the belief that prayers are answered and that God does, in fact, respond to human needs and suffering. We believe that. And we admit that, that that may mean letting God have access to our hands and feet when they are needed to make a difference in very difficult and troubling situations. What I'm talking about is discipleship. Discipleship can be difficult. But we pray and we believe that God will bring a kingdom that is peaceful, that God will provide daily needs that God will forgive our unbelief and that God will shield us from trials that we can't handle. So keep at it. Keep at it. It's God's gift of the Holy Spirit that empowers our prayers. The Holy Spirit gives us the words and the desire and, and yes, that persistence to speak with God and to make known not only our needs, but our wants as well. In this way, we can learn to recognize those generous gifts from God, that God provides our daily needs. There is something about seeking God's will rather than asking God to satisfy ours, to satisfy our will. That just seems to open up more and more doors of possibility of being able to see the kingdom of God present in the world around us. And that gives us hope. Hope that in spite of what we read in the news, see on the television, that there is hope, 
that things can change and will change, that God is present and at work in this world. And we pray that we will see what God is doing so that we can be a part of it. Because otherwise, what do we see? A dark, dreary, and hopeless place. And we don't believe that's what God made. God made something beautiful for us to enjoy and to sustain us always. So keep asking and see what God provides amidst the exciting possibilities that are there at the hand of God. Amen. Yesterday, I participated in a uh, funeral where well, I conducted a funeral service for a member of the First Church in South Charleston. Longtime member, they moved away, and uh, his wife died uh, six months ago. And actually, it was the, her, her funeral was scheduled for the day that the two foot of snow fell in Charleston. So uh, that was for her funeral and then for her. he died and they brought his body up to be buried. And it was the hottest day of the year so far. Uh, so this family, it's, it's the Jeffries family, so remember them. A couple of them are somewhat local but not members of the church there in, in uh, South Charleston. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to worship you, to, to offer our praise, to offer our joy in being here together in this place. We are grateful for those expressions of joys that we have shared earlier for the, for the return visits of longtime members. We thank you for them and for their work among us. We're grateful for those, uh, for the young people that are here, the young adults that are becoming such an important part of this congregation. We're grateful for their ministry and abilities to do new and exciting things. We're grateful for the continuing work that you give us to carry out in your name. We're grateful for the church and its expressions in, around the world and in different places and the ability of the church in South Charleston, the Presbyterian Church in South Charleston to, to carry on its mission and ministry without a, a called pastor in place. And we're asking prayers for them that they will be able to continue as they seek pastor leadership, pastoral leadership. And we ask this church as well to be blessed as the leadership uh, is out there for this church into the future. Lord, we're mindful of the challenges that come with this life. and We've mentioned so many needs, the prayer needs, the concerns that have been lifted up. and There are many names mentioned this morning. and We think of those and lift up those who are under medical care that uh, have some challenges of healing and uh, medical uh, diagnoses and different uh, aspects of that recovery. We're grateful for those who have experienced healing and are on the mend. And we praise you for what you have done in their lives. And we ask you to be with those who are uh, suffering under dire diagnosis that uh, what they are uh, dealing with will, in all likelihood, take their life from them here on this earth. Lord, we place them in your hands and ask you to, to be with them, to support them through their journey. 
We think of those who mourn the loss of family members and who seek to, to find a way to make that adjustment into a life where you don't have someone to call to get answers for your deep questions. Lord, help them to find uh, ways to do that and that you will place someone in, the, in their path that will provide that confidential ear to hear their concerns. Lord, there's so many challenges in this world and we're, we're befuddled by the way the terrorists get so much satisfaction from taking innocent lives by bombing or mass shootings. We don't understand the mindset that can do such things to fellow human beings. We pray for a change in the hearts in the minds of those who see that as an answer to some sort of problem, often self-perceived. Help us all to work for peace, for understanding, for reconciliation between people that are at war with one another. Lord, we're distressed that so many people raise up their religion as the basis for the killing. Again, we don't understand that mindset. Help us to work always for peace. Help us work for justice for those who are not receiving a fair hearing, are not perceived as worthy of being treated with respect or consideration. Help us to be able to talk across lines separating races and economic differences. Lord, there are challenges, but we have hope, and we pray for hope. Hope for this community, hope for our country, and hope for the world. We pray that you will bless us with answers and a change in the world to come. And Lord, now hear us as we raise our voices together repeating that great prayer from Scripture that we have learned and now we recite together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What shall we give to the Lord for all his generous gifts? We shall offer to the Lord our great sacrifice. Let us give our tithes and offerings.
Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us. And now we give a portion of what you have blessed us with back to the work of the church. We ask you to bless the gift, bless the giver, and bless it to its use so that it may make a difference in this community and therefore in someone's life, especially this one. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. it to the Lord in prayer, persistently, persistently, make it part of your life, pray, establishing that relationship with God where you can feel comfortable asking, asking for what you need. And now go in peace, go with the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, resting and abiding with you, leading you forward from this day forward. Amen. The song that's in the bulletin uh, is one that Bruce and I learned at the small church conference in Fayetteville a little over a year ago. And I've thought about it a whole lot of times since then. And I wanted to share it with you. And I kind of went over it with some of the young adults on Friday evening. So if you'll listen to it and let them kind of sing the first or sing it through once, then I'll invite you to join us and we'll sing it through two times. So you can kind of get to learn to know it.
Keeps moving. I do. I do. 